All right, now that every file has been edited and it's where you want it to be and sounds the way you want it to sound, we're going to export each track into iTunes. Um, and the reason we're doing that is because iTunes and iMovie interface with one another and it's going to be easier to find all of your sound effects when you're editing your film in iMovie. So the first thing we need to do is make sure our cycle length is the same length as our audio track. If we don't, then our cycle will have, or our audio track will have a lot of dead space back here. So if this was all the way back here, all of this dead air would be there. Okay, so make sure your cycle is the same length as your audio file. Go to the share drop down menu, click song to iTunes, change it to match the name of your track. So I'm going to name this wind one. Make sure export cycle area only is checked and then hit share. Now give it a sec, because if you notice down at the bottom of the screen, iTunes is bouncing, which means it's launching. Um, if you get windows like that, just let it go and it'll automatically play just like it did for me. And then you just want to keep that window up so it doesn't have to launch every time. So you can just minimize it down into your dock. Then you go back to GarageBand, mute wind one, because you just did it, unmute wind two, or your second sound effect, change your cycle length and do the same process. Share, song to iTunes, name it. This will now stay checked, so you don't have to worry about that, and hit share, and it will automatically end up in iTunes. And do your, do your next one. change your cycle length to be the same length as your audio file. Good, it's not muted. Share, song to iTunes, Gollum voiceover one, share. It's exporting, now this one's longer so it takes a little while longer and then it's going to export right into iTunes and autoplay. And just keep doing that for every single one of your files um, and then once you're done, then we have to pull the video file that you're going to be dubbing this over from the internet. So that's what I'll show you in the next tutorial. So move on to step number four.